Welcome to Magra Deer Builder Wells. This is part two of a Necromunda Sump Sea Settlement build. Yes it is. Um, although it could actually be part two of a Star Wars Legion water world kind of build. Um, either of those things work. Ah, that's why it's got both of those in the title because to be quite honest uh, I'm using Games Workshop Ash Waste Scenery, uh, the HAB units, and they work so well from a, just a generic sci fi kind of scenery kind of thing that it works just as well for Necromunda as it will for Star Wars. In fact, in many ways, for Star Wars and Stargrave and that kind of thing, it worked better because what the Ash Waste Scenery is missing is ad mech 40k skulls and stuff. Um, it's much cleaner sci-fi kind of thing, so well pleased. Um, if you are watching part two before you watch part one, do yourself a favour, go back and watch part one. Um, if you haven't watched part one, chances are you're not one of my subscribers, so uh, click like and subscribe and then go back and watch part one, that'd be cool. Uh, if not, if you've watched part one already, then you'll know how I got to last week, which is uh, last time, which was everything stuck to the board and the HAB units kind of like rusty worked out in place. In fact, I did get further than that when I was working like that. This is how far I've got. <laughs> um, with a number of other platforms and various other bits and pieces too. But I realised when I was filming and making that I'd got so far that I got tons of uh, footage so I, I should stop and make part one. So we, the first thing we're going to do in this video is backtrack um, and uh, make uh, the, you know, use, use those bits. And now we're going to carry on. Um, I'm really pleased with this. I know this one is mostly Necromunda kind of scenery, but it's the way you use it and put it together it is working really well for me. Thank you to everybody who watched the uh, episode one, and to everybody who left comments, uh, conversations about warping boards, which is really good, uh, and all sorts of bits and pieces too. And the fact that many of you are quite clear that you're quite happy for me to ramble on like I do, because it's all about the process, which is really great. Um, in other Magrathia rules, uh, in other Magrathia uh, builder worlds news. You may have seen War Games Illustrated Salute Report. Two thirds of a page, Magga 3 of Builder Worlds. Why? I didn't win any prizes to salute this year, but to get that much coverage was really nice. Uh, so, uh, Daniel Falkenbridge yeah, of uh, uh, War Games Illustrated, if you're watching this, thanks very much, it's really cool. Um, the Magga 3 team are going to be at uh, South East London War Games show in October. And uh, well, I'm sure we're going to be back in salute next year. I don't know what we're going to take though, so we'll have to see how we go. Could be persuaded to take a bloody great big kind of like sci fi necromundary swamp sumpy kind of thing. You never know. I seem to have built quite a lot. Um, <laughs> we shall have to see who goes from there. So, yeah, so the, the plan, very briefly, for those of you who have jumped straight to episode two, is uh, I'm building. Uh, part of a settlement out on the Sump Sea. You may have seen uh, other Sump Sea videos of mine. If you haven't, check out the playlist. It's quite big. Um, I wanted somewhere for ordinary bods, if there's such a thing uh, as ordinary people in the Necromunda world, to just kind of live and go about their daily um, lives. And I wanted to use the Ash Wastes Hab units because I'm just not going to get them used for Ash Waste. So from that point of view, um, it's been a lot of fun kind of like putting all that together. Uh, where I've got up to now is that, uh, as I've just shown you, I've got a bit further than you thought, so we're going to go back and have a look at that. Then, what I really have got to do is do more digging through the CAC, set a lot more if there's anything else I want on the surface of the water. If not, do the surface of the water and then just get adding details to these models and uh, doing the painting. Um, so, uh, yeah, best we crack on and um, see what we can do. It's uh, yeah, kind of cool. I'm quite enjoying this. Definitely, definitely going to have to uh, buy some more of these hab units to make some more of this watery town. I really quite like it. It's very good. Um, and uh, yeah, and then that way there I can include Star Wars figures on it too. That might be neat. Star Wars skirmish. Star Wars Legion, but not necessarily Legion. I don't think this would necessarily lend itself particularly well to Star Wars Legion kind of things. But it would be cool from a skirmish game point of view. So uh, let's see what we can come up with. Anyway, back to the model. Let's get down here and check it out. This is where we're at to. Um, now we've got two hab units stacked up here. Um, they come apart. The lid comes off this hab unit. If I just want to get into this hab unit, I can take off 
this walkway, you've probably seen that a moment ago, if not we'll talk about it. Um, this lid comes off this hub unit, this hub unit is the lid of that hub unit, so that's kind of cool. Um, and then over the other side of the model, the extended hub unit also works really well as well, which is nice. I've worked really hard on, on the layout of this board, it took ages, you may have seen me umming and ahhing it, about it but I worked I tried really hard to not have things at perpendicular lines so these are kind of like in parallel with each other um, but the walkways and bits and pieces are more interesting angles to stop the whole thing just becoming a kind of like grid um, which is not at all organic um, I love these walkways that come with this uh, uh, set and these cool um, Handles that go around the outside at the top of these things because you can then hook them on. Well, I've cut bits off in this case, so this walkway is detachable but then does go across one side to the other. Gives you a really high up platform here. I messed around with the configuration of some of the uh, um, walkways uh, to lengthen them and to lower the steepness of the angle so that figures won't fall over quite so much going up and down which is quite an important part of the game so these are far more let's find some unpainted Star Wars figures because that's what I've got to hand these are far more um, figure friendly that's a Bosk figure a Trandoshan warrior um, they'll go up and down there they'll look pretty neat so that's kind of cool um, <sighs> We have got, because that's just video this bit here, so here we have the platform here, I like this one on the large hub unit, which is made out of a deck plate from one of the ridge haulers, we've got a number of ladders and layers down here, so we've got a nice little jetty here, obviously this is going to have to butt up against some other boards to have water here to allow boats to come alongside, and I've put one supporting uh, brace in here. I think I'm going to put another one in the other side. That will look quite neat as well. So, um, yeah, I now really am at the point of having to decide what details we're doing. So it's time to do some more digging through the cack. Digging through the cack. Digging through the cack. Digging through the cack. Okay, let's do it. Let's see what else we can find. Okay, the biggest problem actually I've got. It's a nice problem to have to agree with, to be honest, is I've got so much cack that I can dig through that uh, it's just a case of sifting through and picking out the best bits. <sighs> Take them on these canopies from the marketplace, and I think that's going to go down the long side of one of the hab units if I can fit a way of getting it on. Although this flat bit at the back doesn't line up with how the rest of it works, I've got uh, bits of Cahadron Raider. Um, uh, uh, kind of ships. Bloody great big look. I mean, check it out. That's that's a harpoon. This is I've used these on other things. It's a fishing settlement, so I think they're on a platform up here. There needs to be a harpoon gun that's just kind of sat there waiting just in case big things present themselves. Um, of course, there's, there's loads of fuel barrels and uh, jerry cans and um, oh, then there's. Where are we? Lost it. A couple of resin bits that I've used on other models. Here we are. There's a pipe with a bunch of gribbly kind of uh, growths on it, which is nasty. I can't remember where that came from. Got a bunch of free stuff from it. It's cool. It's going to have like an output that's going to be attached to one of the kind of like concrete structures, I think, just pumping goo into the sump, which is quite neat. Um, oh, I've got these pipes. These are from a not Lego Doctor Who thing from some time ago, but they'll be quite cool. Nice and flexible, but then there are also moulded pipes again. That's a Hadron Raiders one. Um, I've got the bottoms from coffee pods. These are quite neat. I think I've used these on models before. They're kind of cool. They're just interesting textures. I'm just going to go about sticking a whole bunch of this stuff on. Of course, there's loads of sprues, loads of details on the actual sprues that come with this model as well. Um, aerials and, and little grippy bits and plugs and things. So from that point of view and all loads of stuff that stick out at the edge of the model. It's really, really neat. Um, 
I'm going to stick a few more on and then we'll have a quick tour of where we got up to and see how we are with that. I wonder if I want to check this out. I don't even know where, what the hell this is. This is from Universal Studios Japan, apparently. It's a, it's a Jaws thing. Look, there's Jaws shark hanging up from a kind of like a cross tree. Um, and that's fishy and it's kind of cool. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to cut that off its base. And that's definitely going to get mounted, I think, on the concrete. Because, uh, yeah, these are fisher folk and that's what they're doing. I've got... I can't remember if we... Where, where's that box gone? That's the bloody box. Uh, there we go. Fish from Iden F. Deepkin. Not that bugger. Not... Um, but what I've done is I've trimmed them away as best I can. I'm going to have like pairs of fish hanging up. Um, I want this to have a definite fishy kind of feel. It's a fishing salmon on the sump sea, so from that point of view, that's what it's going to look like. So, um, let's stick some more on. I'll catch up with you in a minute when it's time to do the water. The key bit right now is to decide if anything else needs to go on the actual board surface, which the water will then have to work around, which is probably not much because um, I want as much clear water as I can so I can have boats go chugging around, that kind of thing. I need to decide. Got one. I need to decide which four wall holes I'm going to plug with these plugs. Um, and see where we are with that. It's all good. I'm being very careful, super careful, with not having anything sticking over the edge of the base because I'm conscious the base will fit in a really useful crate and I don't want anything sticking out. Although I do want stuff close to the edge of the bases so that when I put another base up alongside it it will I'll be I might be able to get kind of walkways gantries that kind of thing attached to it one way or another so um, yeah so have a bit of a fiddle see what else we can do I'm not going to show it to you now till I stuck a whole bunch more stuff on awake oh <laughs> here's the bit I'm working on at the moment which is the long side of the long hab unit I've got this platform down here that we looked at which is from the uh, uh, ridge hauler. Now I've got two platforms suspended under these two X's here, laddered down, and I'm now trying to work out a way of getting this canopy from the, sh the market to stick over the top. I think that would be way cool if I could do that. Problem is, is I still want to be able to take the roof off. Um, although the simple solution might just be to stick it directly to the side of the roof um, that would work it doesn't give it any end supports but uh, I might just have to go with that the problem is, is the end supports would need to come out here and then join down the solid bit of the model here and then that would force the roof to be stuck on so I might have to go with William suspension of disbelief uh, to stick that on but I think that would look really really cool over that um, so uh, the other thing I'm playing around with is possibly using some of these bits here which would go sitting there would support it I think. They stick in, enabling you to have more, I could stick them in there, might be able to stick the Canopy over that. I think that look pretty neat. So that's why I think I'm gonna give that a go. And see if that um, see if that works. I might have to carve a few bits out to make things fit. But then that's the joy of working with polystyrene. So it's really, really hot in the workshop today, which means the polystyrene cement is flowing. You just have to tip it, and then out it comes. So so that's sticking quite nicely. That's gonna go on there, right? That's gonna look quite good in a minute. You'll be able to see that when that's kind of on. Uh, but uh, in the meantime other things. Down here, uh, this is a bit of Playmobil handrail. I quite like the idea if I cut it, I'm going to have to use now, of course it's plastic, but it's not fast iron. It's, you know, it's not going to stick with poly cement, so I'm going to have to use a different glue. So we're going to use Gorilla, oh shit, fucking super glue. <laughs> so I'm going to use some super glue along here. Run that along the side there, I've trimmed it out so I get maximum contact with the plastic because although these people are some people are kind of thinking you know 
safety's sake and all that, they'd have the odd handrail on these things, wouldn't they, really? So, look, missed a gun there, like that. That'll do nicely. Although, of course, if you're on this side, you're still going to fall off, because there's a handrail here, and there's a handrail here. But you're going to fall in the drink over that side. But then, that's where you could easily climb out on the concrete or wherever else here, so... Uh, and down here, I've had to cut... Can you see that? Yeah, we can. Cut bits out of this bit of walkway here to go onto there because they fit them real close together coming off this. And I've stuck this round platform close enough, hopefully, that I'll be able to use if I make another piece of train. I'll be able to stick a bit that kind of hangs off the edge here, kind of thing, going onto another board, which would be quite neat. That would be quite a cool way of doing it. Help cover up the fact that they're individual rectangular boards as well, which is kind of cool. Um, so. <sighs> Getting to the point where I've stuck on an awful lot of stuff, and I don't want to go massive stupid overboard. It's that kind of thing where I could stick the old crate. I'm going to stick the old crate in places where and things like that where they aren't going to get in the way of figures. Um, I like the idea of this jetty over here. This could well be the fish sellers, although this is really posh. So this may well be the fish kind of like market kind of slop shop thing fish shop fish mongers that's the word I'm looking for let's turn that around Hang on. put that on there which makes this one a bit more of a posh gaff <laughs> I wonder if I've accidentally just made a tavern I quite like the idea of making a another inn out of sea who would have thought that um, that's quite cool I did think about making one even longer, but actually this works works really well as a pub. I might have inadvertently made another booter. As we all know, I am a McAfee, a drinker, builder of drinking establishments. I think I might have inadvertently made myself another drinking establishment. The more I make do to this end of the model, the more I like it as a... I quite fancy it as a pub. It's got big open doors and things hanging out. Uh, I like it as a. I was going to make. I was thinking of making another pub. I was thinking of. Um, extending, getting an extended one of these and extending it even further, but that would be bloody silly. And actually, this makes really quite a good boozer. This is bigger than. Um, what's it called? Bigger than Crocs. So I might actually have to have this. <laughs> We can make some neon signs. I know this is a pub. Oh my god. Uh, that'll work really well. I think that'll work really well. I think it'll look kind of cool. That means that there's a reason for kind of detailing some of the inside here as well. Then um, I can have the odd thing down below with beer barrels on it or whatever else. Or, um, that kind of thing. It's quite neat. So this could well be the, the pub out of sea. Nice. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a huge cantina. <laughs> if it was just like Star Wars, it doesn't have to be an enormous cantina. I'm going to make a cantina for me other Star Wars scenery, but uh, this could be quite good as a boozer. I quite like that. Just a little drinking hole. Magathea, builder of drinking holes. Inadvertently, just made himself another drinking hole. I have to come up with a cunning name for it. I'll have to have a think about that. Yeah, that's kind of wicked. <laughs> Pull up along the side of the jetty down here. Can not see that down there? Climb up the ladders into the boozer. Much drinking. Fishmongers down the back. This is starting to look pretty good. I am going to have to do the water thing, I think, and get on. But yeah, this could well have just become a pub. Yeah, and if that happens, it needs stuff inside. But not too much stuff inside. If it gets too much stuff inside and you can't put figures in it, but it does need the old table, the old bit of beer, doesn't it? Right. Okay. Well, that was, that, that was the thing that happened. And then, out of nowhere, as you build, sometimes, sometimes I start with a project like this, and I've got a total plan to start off with, and then other times, as you build, a narrative and a project of beer. I just that's what I love about doing this. It's really cool. It's uh, so 
you're just fiddling and you're sticking things on and going, oh, this will go here and this will go here and this will be really cool. And I really like this like this. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this now has become an inn or a drinking hole. And I can build stuff and add stuff to it now, bearing in mind it's a drinking hole. So down here now, I'm going to add this little jetty, which is tyres on a bit of walkway. And I can add that to the concrete because that's where the beer gets delivered. And the barrels on here, and they go into the bar here, and this is where the bar is, and that's where the punters arrive around the front. <sighs> yes, it's really cool. I'm really loving it. Um... <laughs> that's what is cool about this hobby. And the way I go about doing things, I really enjoy it. And, and the fact that in the end is, there you go. There's a story, there's the narrative. Here's this piece of scenery then starts to come alive as we then get the drinking hole which is a key part of the establishment of, of the, the settlement. I can make another couple of these. That's really, really cool. So, oh yes. Nice, so now I'm going to stick this down to the board and stick this to the concrete. Um, I can get the odd beer barrel. I need to take the odd, get the odd um, uh, Necromunda barrel or other kind of barrel. Although the thing, the sensible thing to do, of course, would be to not have a Necromunda barrel, but to not have any barrels at all, but just have various scatter terrain for different games. Because the scatter terrain for different games then helps to make it that game. So these are barrels definitely for 40k Necromunda. Now, the obvious thing to do would be to put these together. I was going to use these as pontoon support and these have got imperial eagles on very not star wars at all so i could cut them off um but the sensible thing to do would be if i was playing a star wars game just to add star wars barrels to it but uh barrel like that and on the end of the jetty there like that definitely that's where my beer's been delivered to because <laughs> that's my some boozer splendid fishmongers over there some boozer right here <sighs> yes 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 i can't stop stuff i'm still sticking stuff on need to do the water but then i wouldn't have been able to do the water if i added that so well, i could have added that to the water to be fair in fact i might even do that i might because it's gonna be bloody fiddly fiddly i might leave that separate i can leave that off put the water on and i can stick that on top of the water and that'll work just as well. In fact, I should have done that with that one over there, but no, too late. You live and learn. I've got this cool thing. I've no idea what this is. <laughs> what it was. That was the other bit of it. Uh, no, don't know what it was. It's a filter of some description. Cut that off. That's going to go on the back of a lump of concrete. Again, going to wait until I've stuck the water on before I do that. So I'm now at a point where next step, definitely stick on water. I could keep sticking bits onto the model inside. Even though this is a pub, um, I just become a pub. It's a pub! Um, I don't want to stick too much into it uh, because I don't want to take up too much of the floor space. Although, cool bits like this, this is off the ridge haulers, that's a foot plate, that would make quite a neat table. Um, yeah, <laughs> I bloody love this hobby, it's great. You just do noodle around and things just kind of happen in front of you. It's cool. <sighs> Time has come for me to stop fiddling around with all the cool little bits I keep adding to this model because it's so much fun. And as you get the water on it, if I get the water on it, everything else will make a lot more sense. So I'm taking all my spare bits and I'm putting them in a box just over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get tissue paper. If you've never seen me do water like this, the rest of my stump is made from tissue paper, which is going to get put all over this board. The tissue paper is going to get covered in Mod Podge and I'm going to make it into a nice watery kind of surface and then um, well, you'll see in a minute the Mod Podge will soak into the tissue paper we're going to tear it fit around the different things which is kind of cool it doesn't matter what colour it is because it's still going to get painted but what it does mean is that um, the tissue paper soaks up the glue, the glue then allows it to have a bit more texture, watery texture, but it's not polyfiller or anything else. So 
Got to lay it on, stick it in, and see what happens. And with a uh, brush, I can manipulate it and pull it around a little bit as well. So, so really, it's a case of tearing off the tissue paper like that, look. and that's where we're going to start. We're going to glue that on like that. And um, can I see that? So, what do we need? What do we need? We need Mod Podge. How much do we need? Bloody loads of it. Um, we also need a big brush that's going to stick it on. An old knacker tire brush like this one. If I do this, daylight today it's going to dry really bloody quick, which is great. And um, that way, there, I can then leave that to dry for a little while and then get back to sticking on the final details it means I can probably anything else I can put the um, jetties and some of the other jetties and bits and pieces on top of the paper uh, which would be helpful this is not a very good brush it's too stiff I need to find a softer brush oh, I haven't got any water out here either which doesn't help find water do it now that's a softer brush that might work don't really need much in the way of water to be honest. Doing that. Sometimes since I've done this, I forgot what I normally do. I'm peeling that off now, I'm laying it out of the way. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put Mod Podge, getting this, all over the board. Smear that around, they're going to lay the bloody paper in. It's a lot easier than trying to. A lot easier than trying to brush the paper, which is obviously what I've done in the past because it worked really well and it wasn't working well for me at all. So. Brush, brush, brush. Get all the glue in the corners. It means I can put all the glue all around. Up into the concrete, so come on, no, it does twang. This is the bit that makes the sump, this is kind of like one of the cool parts of the process. Actually. And while I'm not a fan of painting scenery and what have you, I think when this goes gets undercoated and goes black and then starts to get some paint on it. It's going to look way cool. So. Okay. Now it's all pink and purple. Um, and I'm going to let it try. I'm just going to put some glue, extra glue around the edges. So it all stays on. I'm going to let it dry. Let's tune the Blah blah. 24th, big and hot outside. I'm in a workshop that's like a goddamn sauna. It ain't gonna take very long to dry, so from that point of view, I should be able to carry on with this later today. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Let's go put some brushes in some water. Hurrah. Of course, now I've decided that this is now a pub. Um, actually, that bit isn't, oh, you can't see it. This bit here is a pub. Um, I am gonna have to go do some further digging through the cag. Need to find puppy things. Need to find things to make it look like a pub. I have got Star Warsy barrels as well as uh, 40k barrels, so that kind of works for both systems, which is cool. But and I need to find other stuff to make this thing look like a boozer. Um, so um, yeah, let's go again. I don't know how many times we've done it now in this video. Digging through the cack. Digging through the cack, digging through the cack, digging through the cack. I need a little jingle there. Digging through the cack. Gonna go up there and pull down a box and try not to drop it on my face. Digging through the cack. Spill it all over the workshop. Digging through the cack. <sighs> I think this is the point where I'm gonna stop adding, building, sticking things on. I could keep sticking things on all the time now. Um, I'll bring the camera down here again, look in a minute. I'm now at the point where what I really need to do is get some paint on this. I have um, put my 
uh, sump water on, which always looks a bit weird when it's just tissue paper. The various little details that I've made, I've put, just for example, whoop, it says, grabbing it by the bin, dropping it. A uh, bunch of fish on a table here, because that's going to go outside my fish mongers. Uh, and then uh, this is another little table there with a, another little pile of scary sump fish type things. Um, I've got a plate to make with a energy cell and a toolbox to feel things a bit of pieces, but I'm really kind of pleased with this now. I've added some details inside. Um, who it is? Where we go? Ta -da. Excuse the pink and purple bits. Um, tell you what, I've got a handheld. Bring the camera down here. Let's have a look at this. Have a bit of a close up look. So here we go. Up here, hab unit. Um, I've used some of the um, the this, the gun rack and bits and pieces from the marketplace to make an extra balcony here. We've got a walk across path across to the top of what's now the pub. I could take off this layer. Let's take off the walkway. Um, the roof to this hab unit. So I wear bloody put that. And the roof to the pub. That goes with that canopy. Now inside, say good evening to Ubiquitous Orlock, who's now uh, back on the sump, hanging out in the bar. None of that furniture um, that you can see there is permanent. There's a bar, two or three tables. They are all removable. In case you want to use the whole thing for something else. Uh, then um, coming out here, uh, let's just dart across here very quickly. I can take off, of course, that entire layer. Um, there's nothing in this layer here, and there's nothing in this layer here, deliberately, so I can use scattered terrain to make that what it is. But essentially, um, my intention is that this is the fishmongers, and people come past on boats to come and buy fish from. Uh, type thing. I've added another platform on the water there, then down here. Let's have a look. Harpoon gun on this here railing, that's where my yellow railings went, and then around the back, around the back of the model, I've added this jetty here again from down here. This is on where the bar is on the back of the building. Oh, there's Star Wars. Oh, hey, thank you for that Star Wars barrel there. Well, I don't, that's again scattered terrain. I've added on this black grate here. I really, really am at the point now where I need to get this painted. Um, Added plenty of detail, tons and tons and tons. I reckon it looks really cool. It's going to look ace, so I need to get it primed, and then we'll know where we are from that. Well, there you go. Oh my goodness me. Um, unfortunately, I went to paint and spray uh, undercoat me my model one. <sighs> Run out of black. And it's like got midnight now, so I'm not getting any more. So I've got to paint some figures instead. So, what should we paint? And I've got some Wookiees. Wookie, that looks like Chewbacca. Was that Chewbacca? I think that's Chewbacca. And then um, other Wookiees. Wookie, Wookie, oh, 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 oh. bowcasters. Um, I've got some B and B figures to paint as well. Um, kind of thinking Wookiees could be pretty easy to paint, that mind you, because they're mostly brown. I could paint one black, like black chrysanthemum, I suppose. But they're mostly brown, which works. It's really hot. I've yeah. uh, got rebel troopers, fleet troops. I've always fancied painting them up with some kind of like local planetary defence force, mind you. Uh, yeah, could do that. I'll paint some B&B &B things. And then, and then, check it out. Old school Marauder Dwarf Cannon from Warhammer Fantasy Battle 3 kind of days. Um, just perfect, perfect size to go with. <laughs> Um, a gun crew of weasels. Nice. <sighs> yes. Uh, anyway, let's bloody paint something quick. I don't think I'm going to undercoat it just drift because otherwise I could paint those. <sighs> or Necromunda. Oh, I've got buckets of Necromunda for good painting. What the hell? Let's just, just get on with something. Splash some paint around, Tim. Stop procrastinating, man. 
otherwise nothing will get done again and you'll be going to bed without having painted anything. Good point. Okay. Well, I'll stop talking to the camera. Stop talking to your mates. All out there, listening to your ramble, paint some bleeding figures. Somebody tell me to paint some figures. Stop messing about and get some figures painted while you've got the opportunity and a clear desk. Yes, that's what we're going to do. Okay, so here we are. Uh, primed. I uh, saved myself some time by not only priming it black, but also priming it gun metal. Gun, gun metal? Gun, nah, 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 nah. Oh, kind of like metallic, a gun metal kind of colour. So next, it's going to be <coughs> wield the dry brush. Wield the dry brush is what happens next. But before we go any further, we have to ask ubiquitous Orlog, what is your opinion so far? Rubbish. Here is the return of the big UO. For those of you who are not aware, ubiquitous Orlog has been a key part of my Necromunda builds for some time. Nowadays he's even got paint on him, goodness me. But uh, yeah, it's kind of looking kind of cool. Um, so all I've got to do is paint this now, and we're kind of like done. It's quite a lot of painting, but I've saved myself a lot of time by um, spraying metallic colours. So I'm going to paint the concrete first. Can't see that, can you? Oh, 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 wait. So I'm going to paint the concrete first. Uh, and then do all the rust around the bases and stuff sitting in the water. I've actually got to stick down this tiny little piece of jetty, but I'm going to paint the water first, I think, and then stick that on top of that. Um, then I'm going to do lots of rust stuff on all the walkways and everywhere. I mean, the whole thing is, it doesn't matter what game system is for, this is grotty, this is out in the weather and the sump and everything else, so it's horrible. Um, so lots of... Uh, Morfang Brown as a light dry brush and then riser rust and things like that too. Then I'm going to go for colours and paint, start painting the details. So It's going to take a little while to paint job. I think there's an awful lot of this model to paint, but it's looking pretty cool. Um, yeah, getting there. Nearly done. <laughs> right, well I'm into the painting process now, which we all know is the beer that I love the most. Um, roof, painty bits flat colours, rusty bits and stuff. Problem with a model like this is just absolutely tons and 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 tons you can paint on it. Which is a bit of pain in the bum, which I always find a bit daunting to be quite honest. But what I'm going to do now is paint the water. If I paint the sump water it helps me get an idea of the whole thing and it will bring me that a bit closer to it. You know, bottom line, if I had to, to be quite honest, the amount is painted now already. Um, if the water was painted, it could be used, it could be played on straight away. So I want to paint the water and then just start picking out loads of details and add the bits and stuff. And now, um, if I had time, and I don't at the moment because it's so damn busy and work and everything else, I would go back into my old uh, into the past, the back catalogue, the playlist of sump tiles and I would study carefully how um, I've done the water and look at the colours I've used and the rest of it um, but I'm not going to do that because where's the fun of that be? Um, so uh, I'm going to use, what am I going to use? I'm going to use a plastic tub I'm going to mix up, I'm going to use a spot of uh, uh, burnt umber Windsor Newton paint and I'm going to use a bunch of uh, Galleria which is a Newton olive green and I'm going to use a bunch of uh, gloss mop podge because that will give me a, a water effect on it uh, I'm going to mix that together see what that looks like and paint that on and then at some point in the not too distant future uh, I am definitely going to have to get all of my sump boards out and get a bunch of paint and I paint them all at the same time so they've all got a uniform kind of sumpy kind of colour I don't mind if the sump water changes from location to location place to place it's greener and murkier in some places than others but what I don't want is kind of a patchwork rectangle by rectangle kind of thing so um, yeah that's kind of the plan so I'm going to paint the water on this now and I think that will really help to bring the whole model together um, and then I can then sit and start working out how much from a detailed point of view I want to go into for the moment. By the time I add on a bunch of um, old known oil washes and a bunch of uh, Nurgle's rock kind of green slimy goo and various other bits and pieces it'll take this model a lot closer to being finished. So um, 
yeah, let's mix up some acrylics and some glue and see where we go from there, really. It's the best bet. So green, oh, that's quite a good green. Amazing how <laughs> the green on the um, tube doesn't look anything like the green inside. That's good. Like that a lot. Using a lot of acrylic here. Um, probably not going to use masses of brown in that case. Put that to one side. Liberally pour in my gloss mod podge. You have to buy some more of that. Uh, it's going to allow me to put a lot of cover that. The really strong pigments in there. Windsor Newton paint is going to um, blend in real nice with the mod podge. I could just paint it on. Need a big fat brush. None of these are big fat brush enough. And they're all rusty. Oh, that doesn't matter too much, though, does it? Okay, let's just mix with this and see what happens. Mix, 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 mixy, mix. You don't need to see a grown man mixing paint, do you, really? Especially as you can't see the paints being mixed, it's down here. All you can do is you can see a brush going round and round and round. I might not even be mixing paint, you couldn't even tell, could you? No, I could just be joshing right now and you could be. Look, here it is. There we go. Add some other colour into that. A splash of blue, I think, maybe, or a bit of dark brown or whatever. Darken it up. Of course, the whole point of the Mod Podge is it dries clear, so it doesn't matter too much how well the colour looks like there. Gonna add a bit of brown. Gonna add a bit of brown. Come on, you brown lip. Talk quietly amongst yourself. Go have some brown. Oh, there goes. Timber! Not too much because, again, these Windsor and Newton paints have got really strong pigments in them. Good for paint scenery. In danger of being too brown. Might need more green or bluey kind of colours. Right. Look, I'll slap the paint on and then you can check it out in a minute. All right. I'm doing this now. It's the middle of the afternoon. It's really bright outside. I hope the light of this part of this video isn't too bad. Um, doing that because I'm going to go and see Indiana Jones this afternoon, this evening. I want to paint when I get home, but I want all of this to be dry. And it's nice and warm in the workshop. So it's a pretty grim green. So a bit more of that. Anyway, look, I'm going to put this, slap this all on here. I'm going to let it dry, and I'll see you lot after I paint the cinema. See you in a bit. There we go. So now wet paint is on. I've added some smears of moot green, different places. Lighten it, highlight it a little. And now what I'm going to do is let it dry, really. I'm going to go out for a few hours. Damn hot in this workshop, it won't take too long to dry. And uh, hopefully, then after that, I'll be able to get on with the actual picking out the details. But get this bad boy finished. That's kind of cool. Look, um, how are we doing? What are we going on there? Not like that, though. This is the wrong way around. Even like this, I could use this, I'd happily use this on the tabletop, to be honest. But it does need some more detail painting on it. There's plenty more to go. That'd be Ludo then. Yep, Ludo. So, here we go. Looking pretty cool. Right, let's let it dry. Okay, so it's following day. Indiana Jones was excellent, by the way. Hit all the, the, the ticked all the boxes as far as I was concerned. Uh, really like the end. Very cool. If you have not seen the Indiana Jones film and you're an old fart like me, go and see it because I thought it was brilliant. Um, right, so the water now, on the fact that the whole thing stuck down the desk, uh, the water is, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, that works real well. Um, I've now got to start adding various details and bits and pieces. I've got key side now that's kind of like painted that needs to get stuck in down here i've got details to start picking out of all the, the nasty growths and things along the side um it's so tricky with this thing because you could just keep kind of adding painting and painting and painting adding and adding, 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 adding details i need to do a bunch of washes and make it dirty i need to chip some of this top paint off now because it's got silver underneath it and scratch up and weather and that kind of thing so um yeah it's just carry on the paint process now uh, until i get bored and i go oh it's finished so um 
let's see how we get on for a little while and, and see how long we can kind of sustain our painting mojo. <laughs> oh, because it's, uh, yeah, it's coming on. Look, it's been good. Can we see in there? We can see in there. This is the, the, the pub that needs kind of like filling up with bits and pieces. I've got various things like a bar and what have you. Um, oh, hello. Huh. It beat us full enough the wall. I need to re glue that. Arseholes. Okay, so um, yeah, keep painting. Let's see what happens. Well, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna call this done. I could, I could take a load more time. In fact, I'm definitely gonna come back and paint more on this. <coughs> but I want to get this video finished. <laughs> I've really enjoyed making this model. As I've said a number of times before, the actual modules, the bits, the scenery is made out of mostly. A really versatile bits of kit and I really really like them and I hope that I've managed to make something that works for Necromunda on the sump and is going to go with everything else not that I've got anything else out from the sump to check yet um, but uh, um, I hope it goes really well with Necromunda figures well, it does go really well with Necromunda figures but I'm hoping it's also going to go really well with Star Wars stuff too and you could use it for Stargrave and all sorts of other things as well to be quite honest um, I think anybody who plays Star Wars Legion watching this, or other Star Wars games, um, the new Star Wars skirmish game, would probably also work really well on this terrain. Um, I can't see any reason why it wouldn't be quite. It's quite big, it's quite chunky, and it's not 40 k even though it's a Games Workshop 40k kit. So from that point of view, I think it's, um, yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it. There's tons, I've said this before in other videos, if you can hear the squeaking, that is um, uh, uh, Ludo and her new toy, by the way, so, yeah. It's Saturday afternoon, can't do anything about that. Um, I mean, the workshop is pigging hot, so, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, this is that kind of model where you could add and 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 add, and add, and add detail, and in some ways I'm really inclined to. I love doing that kind of thing. I love that world building thing. I've got various things in the past in other Necromunda models. Uh, it's getting up, going away. I've stuck. I've stuck stuff in permanently, like beds and all. Um, and what I've done this time is I've done it a little differently. I'm going to have various beds and bits and pieces because these hab units could easily have beds in. But back here, I have deliberately left without anything in it. Let's just take the walkway off. Take off that roof there. So there's nothing inside that. And there's nothing inside there. They could happily take one of these bed units or what have you, but as soon as you start doing that, you start filling up the, the thing. Although I am really tempted to do it. It would look way cool, wouldn't it? Really kitted out. Um, maybe I'll do a, an update video at some point. Um, the uh, fish bits out here, I have um left them all loose so they can come or go if i want so they might get in the way for different scenarios because of that little jetty there that's kind of like cool for bringing the odd small boat alongside but i did kind of have the idea that this bit here um is the fishmongers i kind of like that as the fishmongers there um so that was kind of cool over here what I've, I've enjoyed about this model is the fact that it's um has evolved so this is now a little pub and inside it's equipped um, as a pub again I haven't really stuck anything down I could do I've got pubby bits over here and um, then a couple of tables for drinks I oh, want well, uh, actually <laughs> my favorite feature is the uh, video game system murder death kill um, and uh, <laughs> it says uh, pew 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 on the other side um, and that just stands in there as well so all of these features could come out or be added if I need them for different games so I quite like that um, I'm pleased with the, the multiple levels on this model jetty down here and another one round here and all these bits over here I like this removable 
some gantry across there. Not much reason. I can't imagine why anybody would be stupid enough to go run across it. But it's a good Necromunda model. Lots of extra levels and bits and pieces. So from that point of view, um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. I mean, to be honest, the paint job needs way more work. Um, it's okay. But it's a bit ha slapdash and uh, haphazard and I want to get this done quick. My, if you're viewing, you're probably thinking that. You're probably thinking, oh, that looks like he did that in a hurry. Well, that's because he did it in a hurry, because he was getting bored. <laughs> so, like adding loads more figure details, um, you know, beds and, and stuff, I could also spend a flipping year painting this piece of scenery. There's so much on these workshop bits of scenery that you can paint. It's just ridiculous. But, you know, um, yeah, hey ho. Uh, it is what it is. I'll spend more time painting it. If you'd like to see uh, more detail added to it, if you think I should put more detail in, if it's worth adding all that extra gubbins and stuff, then um, give me a shout. Um, put Leave comments down below. I quite happily make another quick update video where all the bits and pieces are in there. I certainly need to now start getting out all the sump scenery at some point, putting it all together, seeing what I've got um, and seeing what else I need to make and how much could be made to go together. Some of it is some of it is very very necromunda, um, like the corridor shrine and that kind of thing, and and some of it is is not so necromunda, just kind of like sci-fi water sump world kind of thing, like I think the kind of fish processing factory, I think that that would kind of like work and that kind of thing. So um, I need to get it all out and put it all together, find a space big enough to put it all together um, will be a challenge, um, but yeah, it might be kind of cool to to see what all that looks like. And I've said before, I need to paint all the water the same color too. I'm not gonna do that though until I've made a couple more boards. Um, I'm going to make uh, another one of these, probably in my next video, I'm gonna start on another sump board whilst we're in, in the neck Ramunda sump world. I know you guys out there are quite liking that. Uh, I'll probably use some more of these hab units uh, and uh, another boat vessel. I like the idea of, of um, hab units having been kind of like placed on a semi-sunken kind of like vessel I think that would be quite cool and I do really need to make a couple of just empty or mostly empty sump boards so I can have some clear water water between um, the different sections so if I use all of it together it's not quite as look there's the cop shop right next to this and right next to that I need a bit of gap and distance so I can play games where these some of these scenery boards that I've made become the kind of like the feature of the game rather than having to put it all together and it all crowded together look really weird things like the um, uh, the enforcers precinct needs to be a little bit distant from everything else what do you mean you haven't seen the Enforcers Precinct? Blimey, there's a whole series of videos about the Enforcers Precinct. Probably got way more detail in it. Go and check them out. Go find them. Go find the, the playlist, man. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I'm, I fancy doing that. I'm going to make some more kind of like uh, habitats, um, and which might have the other, other extra shop on a market, that kind of thing. I'm loving this submerged kind of, um, semi-submerged kind of world that I'm gradually building um, for both Necromunda and for, for Star Wars Legion now as well. Look, I'm, I mean, I've got to point where I've got resin printed Star Wars scatter train. That will sit quite well on some of this stuff. Some of it's quite big and chunky. Um, but while I've got Star Wars figures being painted and I've now got um, Shore Troopers painted up and I've got um, Imperial Scouts coming and Stormtroopers, I've got some, I'm now painted, I'm even making an effort to paint my own Rebel figures. Um, what have I got here? Look, I've got some, well, they're not rebel figures. I'm really going for scum and villainy, to be quite honest. Yeah, great paint job. I know what you're saying there. Look, look, I've got blue on that one. Well done, me. And um, look, for those of you who are fans of Star Wars, look, there's a Rodian. How do you know? Because it's green. Although not all Rodians are green. Um, and I've even painted. Somehow, I managed to have get two Bosk figures. So I've got a pair of Trandoshans, although there's only one of them. I'm not painting them as Bosk, but there's a Trandoshan. I've got a bunch of Wookiees. So I'm going to have a whole kind of like Star Wars skirmishy set pretty soon. Um, so while I'm working on that, I might as well keep going with this. Then, oh shit, just dropped a figure. Didn't grab it quick enough. <laughs> then, when I get the next bunch of figures back from my mate Ook, um, <laughs> Hi Simon, <laughs> hope you're watching this. 
get back to painting those Judge Drift figures. When I got back with it, when I got the next batch of Judge Drift figures back, um, I'm then going to get on some Judge Drift Senior as well. So um, it's be pretty cool, really. Um, I'm liking this. If you think if you get other ideas of some kind of like stuff, I ought to make. I need to make a submarine sub description. That would be way cool. But if you could think of other sub sump scenery that you think I could make, leave a comment down below. If you're liking the Necromunda sump stuff, that'll be pretty cool. Another thing I thought of doing for the sump was maybe do some conversion work on a couple of Sarissa kits. There's this one. Can you see that? Look, that's a, like a traditional swamp boat kind of thing. And uh, for viewers of films like The Revenant, you'll recognise this kind of malarkey, which I've already made before. And uh, it's a really simple Sarissa laser cut thing, but I think that'll work quite well as a Necromunda fishing vessel if uh, I Necromunda it up a bit. Uh, so um, we could possibly, I mean, have made a crew um, courtesy of Hero Forge um, and my mate Gary, who made them for me. Cause I just, uh, um, I've got a bunch of Necromunda figures, kind of like fishy type figures that could go on that. So that might be a video as well. So we'll have to see. So um, there's going to be a couple more Necromunda videos in the next little while. Start of July. I'm then going to launch into August. August is going to be mental for me this year because I am a pirate. Arr, arr. Um, all across England, um, I will be shooting guns and having sword fights. Um, uh, uh, four different castles: Dover Castle, Cashmere Castle, Pendennis Castle, and Scarborough Castle, which is going to take up a vast amount of August. So, from that point of view, I can't see me getting much built, but I am going to try and sneak in the odd bit of hobby. So, um, we'll see how we go there. It might be a good one for a little kind of like some fishing boat kind of thing uh, video amidst all the mayhem um, so look out for more sump uh, C builds and then yeah we're gonna get to some just dread and then probably back to some B&B &B. oh I've got a patreon build to do as well so um, from that point of view uh, thank you very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, as much as the last it was great to be back in Necromunda I really enjoyed it um, I'm really enjoying making this stuff it's cool uh, problem now I've got to do, of course is go and find another crate and fill up another crate and stick it in uh, the garage with all the other sump scenery but uh, hey that's my problem and I've made some space recently so I've got room for six or seven more projects so which is kind of cool um, so yes thank you very much for watching this video and sticking with me and getting to the end of this project I hope you like it if you have enjoyed watching this video then make sure that you subscribe to this channel click like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff oh and uh, leave comments down below if you tell me about uh, my sump builds and where, where if you want to see more detail more lights more all kinds of stuff if you've got ideas for some builds Lee you know get the idea leave a message down below um and uh um uh, yeah thank you for supporting my channel <sighs> yes brilliant okay it's really hot and sticky this afternoon i hope we're going to get a storm in the meantime uh, i'm going to get the camera off and i'm going to come show it around here sorry no really flash smoothie all the kind of like sun boards out for this one maybe when i build the next one i'll put two or three of them together we'll see how we go in the meantime thank you very much for watching magathea builder worlds i will see you next time Some Star Wars stormtroopers there, actually. Short troopers to stick them on here, and they might look kind of, look kind of cool. We interrupt this saucy video of go looking at this piece of scenery because I know you're thinking, hang on, what about your big good to Sorlock and his mates? So, let's lose the shore troopers and put some Necromunda figures on it. <laughs>